what you see on Saturdays uh, is a direct reflection of, of what you do throughout the week. And when you don't perform uh, to the level of your expectations uh, consistently, uh, the only thing to do then is to, to ratchet up um, the consequence level uh, in practice for, for not doing that. And, and the thing that we're learning uh, is it's, it's okay to make mistakes on a Tuesday practice, but there are mistakes that are acceptable and, and those that aren't. And, you know, it, it's okay that this is a different defense and we're going to run this play like this and, oh, okay, hey, I, I went to the wrong guy or, okay, run it back, let's, let's see that again. Or on defense, hey, it's, we, we didn't adjust to the motion quite right on, on this coverage because it's new this week or whatever. Those, those all are okay. Now, you, you got to get them fixed in a hurry and, and make sure that um, the ball doesn't roll downhill. But where, where I'm going with this is what's not okay is when we tell you to go left and you go right on a Tuesday um, when there's literally no play call for the offense and an, uh, an offensive player false starts. And so today, it was, if that happened, it's a get out. Now, we may, we may show up to the Wagner game, um, you know, less athletic on the field, but we're, we're damn sure not going to look like a poorly coached team uh, the way we did the other night. Um, so the, the players that have ability uh, need to, to learn. And, and the only way that uh, we can field uh, a team that's athletic enough and consistent enough then is to, to get the athletic guys consistent. And um, that's our job as coaches. And, you know, we've, uh, we haven't overturned every stone uh, just yet. There's always another one to overturn. Uh, and so we're, um, you know, I'm obsessed with trying to, to figure this team out because I, I think we've got good guys. We've got really good players. Um, but I think it speaks holistically too. I, uh, this is, you know, we, we got to ask ourselves as a program, you know, what are they doing at UConn through three years that we're now, or what, however long Coach Moore has been there, um, you know, they, they had some really good players. And uh, I want to know, you know, why is their offensive line pushing us around? Straight coach, mm -hmm. you know, why, uh, it, every it, you know, there's an administration that's won multiple, multiple tens of national championships. You know, I'm, I, I got my personnel guy. What? Who, who's? We're going to go over there too deep on Thursday and figure out. Okay, what transfers did they sign? Were we recruiting that same transfer? Uh, what did their collective pay? You know, and, and so we've got to find out because that's a very, very good barometer. The University of Connecticut, what Coach Mora has done there, not I think fourth year. Um, it is because that's not an easy place to recruit to. So I want to know what what's their, what are they spending on player acquisition and, and retainment? What are they doing uh, in their strength and development department? Because uh, we, we've got to speed this thing up in a hurry uh, if we want to look like, play like, act like UConn. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're this is this is a deep dive into into everything that we do. Coach, we saw um, a little bit of Kaysen towards the tail end of the contest. Can you talk about what his role is expected to be this weekend? Will we see more of him or? Yeah, I, I think you'll, you'll see him play um, a, a scripted, not scripted plays, but at, at the, a scripted time in the game. Uh, Coach Fry, we've communicated that to, to both Cameron and, and him. Um, we haven't settled on, you know, kind of the mechanics of that, you know, when and, and how, but um, again, I, I I told everybody uh, on Sunday I, I can't I can't look at this team and ask them to, to change and, and um, get rid of bad hat. You know, I, I've got to make some changes too, and I've, I've got to do things as the head coach to um, create some kind of, of um, you know, meaningful change. And if that is 
Um, the play of Kaysen when he gets in, great. If that is if Kaysen being there and Cam knowing and, and playing better because of it, that even better. Um, but uh, we're, we're, like I said, this is about uncovering every stone uh, to find the right buttons to push uh, on this team. And, um, you know, we've got two weeks to, to kind of figure that out. Just a quick follow up and then I won't talk anymore. Let these folks have okay. it. Uh, I won't. Um, Tyreek was experiencing some sort of a peck issue Still before. With it. Yeah. And that is that part of the. Sure. Okay. Yeah. He's uh, he hadn't thrown the ball in, in a while. Uh, we, we could jog him out and get away with the run game. Maybe a select number of passes, but he, he can't open that up, so to speak. Um, so much so that I think we're getting an MRI today or tomorrow. Just, you know, we, we diagnosed it as a pec strain. We just, we want to make sure that there's nothing else uh, going on in there besides just a, you know, a pec strain that, that needs to heal. Okay. Thank you. Jamari said you're going to uh, simplify a little bit the offense this week and based on what I'm hearing from you, are you, I don't want to say going back to basics, but are you toning things down? I think it's fair. Yeah, back to basics is, is certainly fair. Um, I think as, as with any team, you never really know until you know what you have. Um, on the good side and the bad side. You know, there, there's been plenty of teams where I wasn't sure if we could do X and, you know, by week three or four, hey, we, I think we can do X, you know? And then there's there's been other times where it's, hey, I'm pretty sure we can do Y, and then through three weeks, hey guys, I don't know what we were thinking, but we can't do Y, <laughs> you know? So there, there is, with every team and certainly with a team with as many new faces as ours, there, there is a, a learning uh, element to it. I, I think we definitely overestimated maybe um, our capacity offensively. And so um, the only thing I, I know when, when things, I would be a hypocrite uh, to our players because I tell them all the time uh, in times of diversity, in times of adversity, you know, go back to your training, you know, trust your training, go do exactly what you're trained to do and have confidence in that. And so um, we're in a pretty adverse situation right now offensively. And so um, like anything in life, let, let's go back to exactly what we know and let's, let's become a, a master uh, of a couple trades and, and not a jack of all trades and, and master of none. What have you kind of liked from Kaysen so far, whether it be in practice uh, or wherever, and what do you think he'll be able to bring to this offense? Uh, I, you know, he's since he's gotten here, he, he's gotten a lot more zip on the ball. I, I think he's playing uh, with more confidence now when he gets in, uh, simply from, you know, this is a guy that was sitting in his living room, you know, thinking he was probably never going to play football again, and uh, I don't know. He wanted me to tell him that, that story or not, but um, so if he didn't, I apologize. Um, but I, I think it's pretty cool, that, you know, the growth that, that we've seen from, from him and, um, and not just emotionally and, and uh, maturity-wise, but, but really physically too. You know, the ball is coming off of his hands uh, with more zip. You know, like I said, he's playing with a little bit more confidence now than, than he had in terms of uh, moving in the pocket, eyes in the right place, that kind of stuff. So um, I don't know that skill set wise you're going to see a whole lot different, you know, and I, I just, um, you know, I think it's just going to be a matter of, you know, does he see the game any differently maybe or make different decisions. But, you know, he's a good runner uh, and, you know, a, a good passer. You know, I don't know, you know, he's not going to throw it through that wall, you know, and he's not going to run a 4 3 40, but he's not a statue and he's not, you know, he does everything really good. Let, let's, let's put it that way. I don't know that he's got one great tangible quality, um, but he's got a, a lot of really good ones. In terms of the defense, you know, 400 yards rushing twice in a season could, could be a bit demoralizing. What was the message? to the locker room and have they kind of responded and, and shrugged that aside? Yeah, I, I think 
you say two out of four weeks, one of them being Army, and I think there's a, you never want to have that number put on you. I don't care who you're playing. Uh, but those numbers get a little bit inflated when you, you play a service academy that, that runs that kind of offense. This one was more disturbing, certainly. Um, because these are the kind of plays and, and things that, that we're going to see week in and week out. Um, so again, it, it's not, there's no panic, you know. I, I, there, there might be, I, I, don't, I don't know if I've ever panicked, um, but there might be concern uh, for the outcome of the season if I knew that we didn't have it in us maybe or that, you know, hey, Guys, this is going to be a long year. Or, you know, we, we may never get this thing figured out. Like, I, I there, there's no. I don't think there's any. I know there's no doubt in myself, and I, I don't think there's any doubt in that locker room. You know, as a whole, um, especially on that side of the ball. So um, we know we got to play better. We got pushed around, um, and we didn't tackle well. And that, that is a recipe for a long, long night on the football field for a defense. So, um, you know, and, and again, as coaches, we've got to examine you know, when that, when and if that happens again, how do we, you know, best stop the bleeding? Coach, one last one for me. I'm doing a story on Chris Carter. What can you say about what he's done for your program and your players? Oh, man. I, it's how much time he got, you know. Um, he does everything. I mean, he's, he's great for our wide outs, you know, especially now that, um, you know, really anybody out there can, can coach, so he can he can give them, you know, nuggets of, of coaching, but it, it's way, way, way more than that. You know, he's uh, on a personal level, you know, has, has really, you know, he's got a, a few guys, kind of at-risk guys, if you will, that he's kind of put his arms around and then, Really, as a team, they, they know that um, when they go to him, you know, they're, they're going to get uh, reality. Now, it, it may hit him square in the freaking forehead um, in the way that he delivers that uh, reality, but it's, it's also fresh because uh, he can talk to them in, in ways that we can't, uh, but I think they can be more open with him in ways that they can't with us because he doesn't control playing time either, you know? And so um, it, it's, it's been a, a really, really good marriage of um, his expertise, his personality. It just his love for, one, the game. I respect the hell out of Chris Carter for a lot of reasons. And one of them is we're in love with the same thing, this game. Uh, he loves football, absolutely loves it. Um, and the second thing is, he, he loves making a difference in young men's life, too. So we've got two pretty important things in common. And um, uh, he's really good. He was really good at football, uh, but he might be even better at, at mentoring young men because it, he's, he's got a way of, of, of getting out of some guys, some things that maybe I know I wouldn't have been able to get out of. Uh, looking forward towards next week. Um, you mentioned not too many injuries coming out of that game last week. Is yeah, that uh, to clarify, uh, Jaden Williams uh, did get injured on the last drive, and I, I didn't know that. Uh, he's got a high ankle sprain. We're, we're hoping uh, that the level it is, we should have him back for conference play, that he could miss this game and hopefully return for the week of prep. Who, uh, who the game after the bye week okay. um, and Joe Young Joe Young um, on the, the catch down the sideline against FIU um, landed awkwardly and for a guy that's already uh, had two, two knee surgeries he's going to have to have another one um, he tore some car did not tear his ACL uh, tore some cartilage in there that, that needs to get repaired um, so we're down, you know, BJ, EJ, and, and now Joe, you know, of, of you know, kind of, I, I kind of had six wide outs kind of as starters, and uh, three, all three of those were, were in that, that six. So um, we're getting pretty thin 
at, at that position, unfortunately. And then uh, Jaden Wheeler uh, was, was uh, non-contact. Uh, today, I uh, got punched in the, the ribs uh, by an opposing player uh, and actually bruised his, his kidney or liver, uh, one, of, one of those internal organs. Um, and Zeke Moore missed the game uh, against UConn, uh, got a, a stinger in practice that, that didn't resolve itself in time for the doctors to uh, feel good enough clearing him. but. Uh, he was non-contact today, but he's he, real close to having the, the strength numbers to, to being cleared, so um, anticipate him being ready to go. So Wheeler was questionable? Don't know. Yeah, he, he was in a blue jersey today, non-contact, which is tough to do for a D lineman on a Tuesday. Uh, but yeah, I, I, other than you know, every day we'll know more, you know, is that thing, you know, he didn't break a rib and he didn't, you know, damage other than bruising any organs. So it, it's a matter of healing the bruising and the, the pain tolerance at, at this point. Scarly? Scarly uh, is uh, played well. I think he played 22 snaps and I, I think he'll play even more this week. So he's fully, fully, he's clear, fully clear. clear. Good. Yeah. Got it. Um, we saw Jabari play a little bit more against uh, against UConn. Is that the next guy up? Yep. Yeah, he's uh, been in the rotation thus far this week and has done a really good job. Yeah. Um, and is there anything about Wagner? They struggled a little bit this season, but anything that they may try to do when they come in here? That no, I, I mean, they're two and two, uh, you know, and, and kind of won and lost in, in similar fashions. They, in, of their two wins, <laughs> they've blown a team out and they've had a close win. Uh, their losses, they've, they've been blown out and, and had a close loss. So um, this is a good team. I, I've been impressed with their defense, especially number 45, uh, their nickel, Sam linebacker. Um, you know, he's very active and they blitz him, they coverage, they, they do a lot with him. And uh, they, they've got a really talented receiver uh, as well that, um, you know, is uh, decidedly has a decided advantage in targets compared to the next um, next guy on you know on their team. So uh, we've got to know where he is. We've got to stop. Uh, they're they're a zone run team. Uh, so we've got to stop inside outside zone. Uh, which you know if you're if you're them and watching the UConn film, you, that's probably all you're going to run. Um, and then you know uh, offensively, we, we've got to make sure we understand where 45 is and, and kind of what that means in their different blitzes and, and coverages. So uh, there's a lot to prepare for. Um, you know, I know our fans may not have heard of Wagner, uh, but, you know, we're, we're in no position right now. We're, we're not good enough to beat Boca Middle School, uh, you know, with our, our C game. So um, we're going to need to go out and, and play really, really well and, and take another step. I think the most important thing is, is you know, come out of this with a really good taste in our mouths, having played our best, um, and then really dive into, okay, now we've crawled, <laughs> let's, let's walk, uh, and, and hopefully run uh, pretty quickly as, as we head into the conference. Last, uh, last one for me, Coach. Any, uh, any thoughts on the realignment news yesterday, Memphis, Tulane, UTSA, all deciding to stay in the conference instead of going to the Pac-12? How do you do that? So they just said we're, the contract is good. Like what, they did, I'm, I'm uh, confused I don't, as to I don't what happened. Saw. I don't even know what happened. So. Oh, okay. They all, uh, they were considering going to the Pac-12, but they reaffirmed their commitment to the America. Good for us. Uh, good for Tim. Yeah, th this, this conference, um, you know, has been, uh, again, <clears throat> I'll continue to sing its praises, um, you know, from now that we're, we've got four conferences that um, are autonomous, um, you know, the American Conference is um, always has been since its inception 10 years ago, uh, the next best one. And uh, it's exciting to know that the fellow members uh, feel the same way about our conference that we do. So um, I'm not surprised uh, by the news that they were getting recruited, but I'm also not surprised that uh, they 
I guess publicly decided to stay um, because this this is as, as good as it gets um, you know for for most of us right now you, you know as an offense you know with the struggles that we have going on you know we just working on trying to be more consistent and work on the things that we are already good at and just build on that and get better at that uh, so I mean the coaches really simplified the game plan for us really made it easier so we're gonna go out there we're gonna try to you feel me the, uh, the players that we got in the game plan we're gonna try to execute those and we'll see how that goes. Simplifying the game plan, what does that do for you? Obviously, less thinking out there. Yeah, just... I mean, it, it make it make the game. It make you play. It make people play faster. So, you, a lot of people get in the game. You know, they might think a lot. You know, uh, that that cause hesitation. You know, so I mean, that just speed up the game for me or slow the game down for me. And I mean, simplifying the game plan is not too much that you really have to worry about or think about you know what you got and it's, it's only a, a select few of stuff that we're running. So, I mean, I'm just ready to uh, run those plays and execute them on the After you got into that, like, look to improve a lot versus FIU, is it surprising to you at all to, to kind of struggle again versus UConn? And, and what was the message like, after that game and what was the message in practice? I mean, the, the message has uh, been the same. Uh, as an offense, we've got to be more consistent and we know that Obviously, you know, with the struggles we're having, nobody's happy about that. We all disappointed. Nobody want to go through that. But that's the lumps you have to take sometimes. A lot of teams take that. So, you know, we just got to build off what, what happened last game. We can't control nothing that happened in the past. All we can do is get better from it. What do you think was kind of working for the offense against FIU that got away from you guys a little bit against UConn? Um, I think being able to run the ball. Because being able to run the ball, obviously, that opened up everything else for other people. So I mean, being able to run the ball, uh, they had a pretty good. De they had a pretty good defense. They was a good team. So uh, I took my hat to them because they played a good game, and uh, we just got to get better. Uh, I'm doing a story with Chris Carter. What does Chris provide you and your teammates out there as NFL Hall of Famer? And what advice has he given you that has helped you out? Uh, he really teaches me how to be a pro, like how to take care of my body. You know. Because I mean, before he got here, I wasn't getting in the cold tub. I, I hate the cold, but uh, you know, I get in the cold tub now, so my body feels better going into Saturdays. And you know, he just really teaches me how to be a pro, give me advice here and there about stuff I want. I won't say I do, but you know, we we talk. So he he really helped me in becoming a better man and a better football player. What exactly does the cold tub walk us through that? I don't think <laughs> a lot of fans know about that. <laughs> Once you get in it, the first 30 seconds feel crazy. Like you, you hate it, but after the 30 seconds, you know, it, it helps your body. Because my legs always hurt, because I run a lot, I'm a receiver, so my legs always hurt. So once I get in the cold zone, you know, it, it rejuvenate my legs, so I get my legs back for the next day of practice. Cause it's, it's, I got to run a lot the next day too, so that just helped my legs. And you can tell a, a definitive difference between yeah. before you, when you didn't do it and now? Yeah. So it's like a cryotherapy, yeah. what they call that, right? That's why everybody getting cool with us. Okay. I feel like we all understand the task at hand. We gotta get better at what we do. It's not more about the opponent, it's all about us. So in that sense of, you know, whatever call we're running, we need to do that to the best of our ability and our best game will beat anybody. That's the way I feel about it. You guys have had a good rotation on the, on the defensive line. Um, has some of that depth helped you guys play the game that you want to play? Of course, when you have depth, you can keep the guys fresh, keep the guys rolling, and you keep the offense on their toes and they don't know what they're getting. Every, all of us rush different, all of us play different. Um, end of the day, it's all about dominating the line of scrimmage and when you have fresh line, you can do that all game. Coach mentioned about the inside, outside zone game. Um, is there a, an emphasis on stopping that this week? Um, as, a, as there is every week. As I said, we, we want to stop our number one goal as a defense is stop the run. So, as I said before, we're just try, trying to get better at what we're doing, holding our gaps, being where we need to be, and making the plays we need to make, and obviously tackling. So, we're making an emphasis on tackling, being where we need to be, and getting better at our philosophies. Questions? What kind of stood out last week, uh, maybe that UConn did, and, and was, it any, was there anything that you guys maybe didn't expect that they did? Um, no, we went over everything they did. We were prepared for everything they did. Uh, I feel like it was just more adjusting to the speed of the game at the time. Because as our coach said, you know, 
what you do during the week is what you see on Saturday. So I feel like we just need to adjust a little bit better and uh, deal with the adversity a little bit better. We can't start slow. That's what killed us. Has there been any standouts uh, you know, aside you on the defensive line that maybe have you seen some good stuff out of despite the struggles? I feel like all of our defensive line give you something different. Everybody has their own strengths. Um, you know, we got D. Davis and Wheeler inside. They can, you know, get pressure or they can stop the run. Uh, we got people like Marlo and Chisholm who can rush the passer and get in trouble on the outside. Uh, I feel like as a whole, as long as we play together and we do what we're supposed to do, it's, it's, really, it's going to be really hard to stop us. Prince Boyd had a little bit more time this past week playing time. What, what does he bring to the, to the defensive line? Uh, he's a dynamic rusher. He, he can stop the run, he can rush the passer. You know, he does what you ask him to do with, you know, fanatical effort. So, I mean, he's just a guy that brings whatever you need to the table.